What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Crew 42. We are super excited to feature another interview here with two of our favorite people of all time from the Discraft family, Mr. Reed Friskura and Vanessa Van Dyke. And how are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, we're doing good. Wow, that was that was really exciting. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you mean? It's quarantine. There's nothing that exciting going on, so it's just a general goodness. Well, there's some exciting things going on. I mean, you, you're around, so there's always something exciting going on, right? Uh-huh. When Reed's Depending. involved, something's going to happen. It's going to be great. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for coming on the channel. It's been great to just reconnect with you guys as well as just get some, uh, some cool little tidbits from you guys. Um, just kind of a feature going around, you know, getting our Michigan's best here. Um, Reed, we've worked with you before. Vanessa, we've been so excited to work with you. Um, we've had some unfortunate scheduling conflicts that have stopped us either from COVID or from other things as well. But we're go- it's going to happen at some point, I swear. We're going to get you back on the channel. And as you too, Reed, I guess, we, we can bring you along as well. But so we've got some <laughs> questions for you guys. I'd love to hear from you guys. So um, what made you guys realize at what point in your career that you wanted to go pro? Well, for me, I have always wanted to be a professional athlete for some reason, ever since I was a little boy. And I started playing disc golf, and I started uh, basically putting aside my other responsibilities in life to play disc golf and make time for disc golf, and I really loved it. And it was just a really, it was a big passion, and it was something that was like a nice outlet, you know, while everything else is going on. So yeah, I just, I fell in love with it. And I knew I wanted to continue it after I got done with college. And yeah, here we are playing professionally. <laughs> How about you, Vanessa? Um, actually, I had just, uh, I'll try and make it the most condensed story for you. But I was uh, just playing for fun. And one weekend, I saw a bunch of women playing in a tournament. And uh, I watched them for a few holes and I was like, oh, I could do that. I should sign up for the next tournament. And the, I just signed up for like the FA, what is it? FA one, it's just like advanced women. Mm-hmm. And uh, I won every tournament I entered in and, and then I won like Am Worlds that year. And so I just decided after that to start playing pro. No big deal, you know, just show up, win every event. It's easy to do, right? <laughs> it's weird. The story right? that everyone wants, right? Just showed up and I was instantly amazing it. Amazing <laughs> it. Better than everyone. Very cool. Uh, you know, so you guys are together right now, and so I'm certain you guys get to play with each other, practice with each other. So how often do you guys get to uh, practice with each other, caddy for each other at tournaments or events? Uh, and do you guys, like, strategize with each other for each other when, like, you're at an event, you just talk to each other about how to attack a course? Well, depending on the round, how the round is scheduled for tea times, we'll caddy for each other. So it's most of the time. I think Vanessa has the easy out because she gets to play first and then she has to caddy afterwards. So it's like a nice wind down for her. But for me, I got I to gotta haul a bag around for two and a half hours and watch women's golf and then, and then play my round. But yeah, we do practice together all the time. And yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of times where it, I, it's nice to have an extra set of eyes because sometimes you'll be really frustrated and you don't know why you're throwing badly or what's sure. going on. And it's nice that someone else can watch you because sometimes it's hard to diagnose what's going on because you can't really see yourself throw. So I think it's like really helpful to like bounce back and forth, like uh, bounce ideas back and forth off each other and like figure things out. Yeah, and, and trust it's, it's gotta be. Go ahead. As far as strategizing goes, Vanessa's got this thing where she actually writes a lot of her shots down in a book where she'll so we figured out that there's like a obviously uh, a lot of pros talk about where you wanna be teeing off on the T pad or your positioning on the T pad in order to get the best line for your shot. So uh, when we like practice together, we'll write that down together and do our own thing and then we'll like like for women's nationals, I didn't have to play. So all I did was like take care of her and like write all her stuff down for her. But sure. yeah, we do a lot of like, it's like degree of hyzer and hyzer on your shot and then uh, amount of power and then what disc you're throwing and then the T-pad position. So wow, that's, that's so nice to have during the tournament because it sure. takes a lot of the mental play out of it. Yeah, you just check your book and you can gather yourself again for sure. And I'm certain it helps too that you trust the other person a lot too. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you know they're not trying to sabotage you at all. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. Okay, so Reed, we know that you're pretty famous for the water skip shot. We've seen it all videos. Most people actually know you for that specifically, but the reality is is that if people know only only you for that reason, they don't know enough about you because there's so much to your game that's beyond that. You have crazy power off the tee. You're one of the best putters in Michigan. I, I And I actually don't agree with the statement. I actually think you're one of the best putters in the country. Um, just right. off statistics and <laughs> just watching you play as well as, you know, I'm not even trying to kiss up to you. This, this is really how, if people really watch you play, those are, those are real things about you. And one part of your game that I don't think people take into consideration a lot is the fact that you are a lefty. So a lot of the times you come, you come to uh, these courses that have either been designed for righty hyzers or you come to courses where you're playing with a lot of righty players and it's kind of different or backwards to you. So what do you do to prepare for those tournaments and how do you use those righty players to, to your advantage to try to um, prepare yourself to attack a course differently? Yeah, that is a great question. Well, what I would say I do most of the time because I always have to practice with Andy is I'll watch his shot and then I'll just do it a little bit better. I don't know why. I think it's because, I don't know, there's something about a lefty backhand versus righty forehand that just, you know, it just has that slight bit of advantage. So sure. that's like usually what I focus on is just doing a little bit better than Andy. I'm, I'm, you know, that usually does it because he always plays super great. So. He has been on fire this year for sure. And so you, you playing a little bit better than that's just going to keep you guys going up and up, right? Well, that's right. But I mean, especially like during practice and stuff, just do a little bit better. For sure. I can't say, I can't say for the tournaments, but. Hey, sometimes they, the, the wind is just not in our favors, right? <sighs> that's, that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vanessa, um, this year you were able to get your own signature disc, the Meteor. Um, is that something that's always been a passion of yours? Is it something you've bagged or is that something kind of new you've developed into before you chose it this year? Um, so I had discovered how much I like, how much I love the meteor last year. Uh, there's, I feel like the tour starts out on open courses and then as we get, um, I feel like past ledge stone, we kind of, the tour ends out in the woods. So we kind of like, um, end up playing a lot of wooded golf and that's where I discovered that I really like the meteor over than or over than the buzz because uh, yeah. I can throw it pretty hard on slight high like I love throwing on hyzer so I can throw it pretty hard on hyzer and it'll pop up straight and then yeah. if I throw it like a little more flat it'll like go for a good ways and then turn over so it's a really nice uh wooded course disc yeah really good for control uh we picked one up uh donut got one and he is loving every second of it. Was it the tour series? Yeah, the the one that he helped yeah. us with our PPT. He Those could like I gave cool. him the choice, and he said that purple one was too too pretty to pass up on. <laughs> yeah, they came out a little more like just a click more stable than the normal uh, flight. I think people are used to when they get meteors. Sure. So I think this one's actually super nice because you can you have time to break it in, and then yep. it'll be like a more slow turning instead of like too quick. Sure. So I feel like it's nice when it starts off a little more stable than you think because it's more predictable in the long run. Yeah, that's actually very good insight there, you know, because those are coming out on June 22nd. Nope, May 22nd. Um, they already came out, but I think that uh, because of the shutdown, I believe it's opening back up on the 25th. I, or okay. I'm not sure when the new it's coming um, up soon. Order. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty I sure. I saw that they were doing it again. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be, we'll be sure to make sure we keep our eye out for that. We want more of those meteors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, Reed. So back to you. You're, you're two rounds in. You're in the Elite Eight now. How are you feeling going up against, you know, getting prepared for your next opponent on Jay Yeti Redding? How are you feeling? Oh, my. So usually, <laughs> usually I only poop once a day, but I got the stress poops lately. <laughs> because yeti is just such a good putter and I, he, he's got his own signature putter he's so good and he's pretty been good. scoring in the 30s pretty consistently for the dgpt scoring bracket and he, yeah he's i mean he's just got so many accolades and five, i think he's like a five-time putting world champion 
Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely kind of nervous going against him. Let's not make him more nervous, Vanessa. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, you're you. Everyone at this point in the stage has to be a great putter to make it this far. I mean, we had some incredible names there. Is there anyone that surprised you that made it to this far, considering who was in the bracket, or are there any names that you surprised that didn't Did make it? it? Uh, I was super impressed by how Dan Hastings was just tearing it up the first two rounds and shooting in the 40s consistently. Yep. That was wild to see because that's a name that I haven't – I've, like, heard of it, but, mm-hmm. I mean, he's not a touring player, so his name's not the most well-known. Sure. But all the other putters, people who are in the, the Elite Eight, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. Right. They're, they, they ball on the tour, so. Yeah, I had, uh, I think, Matt Bell and Calvin Heinberg in my personal bracket um, at this point at this stage as well. I have mm-hmm. you, I had you and Marweed going, you know, to the semifinals. Unfortunately, Marweed shot the fourth highest score and still got eliminated. It's so sick. He, yeah. Marweed should have taken Melton outside. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, that's all it, that's all it would have taken. I bet. Yeah. Should have, could have, would have, right? Uh, next year, next year, we'll be rooting for it next year. How's that? Or next, or next month. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong, right? You're not wrong for sure. <laughs> um, do you have any quick tips for us on us amateurs to help us get to your level of putting? Uh, well, w- without saying a cuss word, I would just say that <laughs> you can't be scared to, to run stuff mm-hmm. and you have to have the confidence and this maybe it's only me, but you have to have the confidence to know that if you run stuff, you can still make a 30 foot comeback and you can't, I mean the, you gotta, so I think Paul Macbeth said one time he, wants to make all of them because he feels worse when he misses so i mean do you want to feel worse or do you want to feel better and shouldn't that motivate you to make the freaking putt you know like you got to make the putt do you want to feel good do you want to drink tonight or do you want to feel bad and like cry i don't know (laughs) you just got to be confident well you never want to doubt yourself either right you never what would if i you know if i tried to run it and to be fair as the great touch twin of the other side of you right the other side of the coin once said (laughs) He doesn't think Reed Frisker has ever missed a comeback putt of any length. I'm just, just saying that. Uh, it's true. It's true. I, I'm just saying. We, if you go back to that Kalamazoo open footage, there's a, you were probably 30, 35 feet away one putt. It went downhill, and then you were like 50 feet away, uphill probably 15 feet, and bang. Believer, you know, right then and there. Most of my putters only hit the ground once when I make a putt. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's hope we all have that same kind of luck. All right, Vanessa, um, back to you here. Um, so despite your midseason injury last year, um, you had a lot of like career highs. Uh, you had a lot of top 10 finishes. You had a new um, high rating of 936. You did a lot of really good things, even despite that. And um, you talked about very briefly in a couple other interviews that people talked to you about was that one thing you wanted to work on your game was your mental game. So what is something that you do to help you work on that, shape that, so you can be better prepared in the next – um, you know, next game, next year, whatever the case may be. So, uh, right now, or as of recent, I've been working a lot on my pre-shot routine. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) He's just trying to feature you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I've been working a lot on my pre-shot routine and I feel like, um, I also need, or I take that into my practice as well. Because sometimes I feel like when I practice, I'm just out there throwing kind of mindlessly mm-hmm. and you need to have intention and, um, or I've been working or telling that to myself, I need to have more intention and also, uh, do the, go through the same pre-shot routine for all of my practice shots as I would for a shot that I have in a tournament. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a more complete practice and, um, I've just spent, sometimes uh, I get really lazy mentally and I don't want to go through the whole routine. And even in tournaments, I find, I catch myself doing that where I'll just like look at the spot and then just throw. And I mean, that's like the end of the routine and mm-hmm. you need to like, just make sure that your body's lined up and the way you're walk like be aware of yourself and how you're walking up and everything. So yeah, I've been working a lot on that and also trying not to overthink as well like um there's like a certain point in the routine where you kind of turn that part off and then you just allow your body to do it so i think uh yeah i've just been working on being disciplined on that aspect really for sure 
is there a part so like there's a lot to do with the mental game right and you are far much farther along the mental game aspect than most people are um is there a first starting point for mental games that amateurs should approach first do you think um well i've just i've been reading there's a book i found that i really like um where i kind of like use that to model my like pre-shot routine with it and basically i think uh, they should just start off with like a uh, few steps like three main steps and like just kind of like step up whether it's a putt or your drive or whatever you just step up and then you like figure out what the line you want is like mm -hmm. and position your bot like make sure your body is in position with the shot that you want mm -hmm. and then you can your second step would be like imagining it and then third step would be just letting your body do it i think mm -hmm. like starting off with a little routine like that um, brings a lot of consistency and I think it also brings more comfort because uh, you're just like kind of like running a mental program almost so it's kind of you don't have to think too much once you already have it in order and I think it helps like center you and get you more like sane and uh, just I think it r would really help pe amateurs or anybody if you mm -hmm. just implemented like a system like that. Okay. And then let your body throw it. Thank you. Awesome. I have my yeah, tip. Yeah, I was just like kind of talking so much. I kind of forgot what the question was. No, I, like, no I, I, I was writing every single <laughs> thing down so and my game is going it. to improve. <laughs> okay. So, you know, 2020 has been riddled with disappointment in so many different ways just uh, because of the pandemic. You know, we were scheduled to do CCR for the FPO where we thought we'd have a chance to even see you for the oh, first no. time on camera, Vanessa. We were super stoked. And then we had her have our hopes dashed unfortunately when that event got canceled and again they're they're making wise decisions right now based on you know fundraising and the health of the community and so we you know there's no hate in that at all but it's definitely sad to not see those things happen yeah. assuming that the rest of the schedule doesn't get canceled which we all know that there still might be changes in the future assuming that all the events that are still scheduled to run occur which event are you most excited about i don't know i just feel like i i uh really love other events more but right now for some reason i'm just super excited to play deglow because it's in michigan and last year i played so poorly there i kind of want to get my redemption for sure so i'm really i'm really hoping it's still going to be held i know that it's hard to um figure out if that one might be canceled or not canceled or not because of the michigan stay at home order and for everything sure. but yeah, How about you, Reed? I'm, well, I'm most excited about the USDGC if they hold it. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm curious as to how they're going to make people qualify. But for some reason, I've been to every little seat, most of the little Caesars around the country, it seems like. And okay. the ones in Rock Hill, North Carolina have the best <laughs> little, like, is the best little Caesars pizza I've ever had. Don't get me wrong, it's a great event and stuff, but like it's just great to have great pizza. You know what I mean? I, I totally get it. But at least you don't have like selfish reasons to go. That's that's what I'm saying. You know, we're you know, we wanted to get sponsors for some of our other players. Maybe we should talk to Pizza Hut or Little Caesars for you. Uh probably just Little Caesars. I like to support support local, those Michigan companies. So Sure. Sure. Okay, <laughs> Little Caesars, we're gonna come for you. We'll see if we can get like the pizza disc to throw for you. We'll we'll see what we can do. Watch out. <laughs> All right, one last question for you guys. You know, <laughs> um, assuming something occurred at one point where I could, another mixed couple would play against you guys, do you think you're the best mixed couple out there if you had to play against anyone and say, oh, I don't know, Hannah and Paul? Like Hannah Macbeth and Paul? Yeah, so like assuming they just showed up at one place and you guys showed up, do you think you could play a, a mixed doubles and beat them? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> let's start with this. Uh, I got my wallet right here. So, Hannah and Paul, whenever you're ready, uh, let's make something happen. So, so what I'm hearing you say is that you've got your wallet ready, you've got a camera crew right here ready to go, and we're all in Michigan. Yeah. What's the downside here? I, I haven't heard anything wrong yet. I'm just saying. Let's roll. Let's roll. <laughs> Paul Macbeth, I'll, I'll send you my number after this. We'll, we'll get something set up. 
All right, as guys. As long as it's a lefty course. <laughs> hey, I got a couple in mind. I got a couple in mind. We're good. All right. Uh, so at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at this point, we're going to do some uh, reaction videos right now. We're going to have you guys watch a couple clips here. And then uh, after the first few seconds of each clip, you're going to pause the video and you're going to take a guess at who is throwing the disc, who do you think is throwing, what course or tournament are they at. So if you name the course or the event, either one is fine. And then what do you think the result will be? Will they make a shot? Will it go out of bounds? Are they going to miss? You can, whatever you think to your imagination, you think I'm going to pick out of this. You guys are going to pick those ones. All right. So we have our first shot here. Um, someone's in the background there. Looks like a pretty green course. Can you tell me who do you think this is? Where do you think we're at? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, what do you think? I think that's uh, Reed and some Michigan. What was that Michigan tournament you played? Where Lisa Fakus won an FPO? Meyer Broadway. What was the one where uh, that, Nate Wedgren had that throw-in, that like crazy throw-in? That was the shootout tournament. Okay, shootout. I'm guessing Reed shootout to tournament. Okay, what do you think is going to happen? <sighs> it's harder than it looks. It is harder than it looks. <laughs> I think he's going to make it through all those trees. I bet you I'm going to smack a tree, <laughs> just giving that it's Michigan. Okay, okay. So we'll go ahead and play the video at this point. So you got at least some of it. Okay, I'm going to give Vanessa the point for guessing that it's going to go in because it does, in fact. This is actually Chris Davis at Meyer Broadway for the Kalamazoo Open. So you, you said Meyer Broadway. Uh, the, the fun little tidbit about this story is um, I was recording someone else in the woods. I was pretty far away from him, and he told me, hey, come over here quick. And so I showed over there, and I'm wondering, like, is he going to show me something? Is he going to say something? And he's like, this is going to be epic. And then he proceeded to do that. <laughs> Oh my Classic God. Chris Davis. Classic this is Chris a, Davis. This is a smash. Actually, yeah. This is like whole like 13, right? Yeah, so this is a big hyzer. You can't see the hole at all. You have to throw a big hyzer. A couple of the guys, I think, threw deep on the far side of it, so they had to pitch out of it, and Chris probably had one of the better drives. Big, But it was a good, oh, you know, 70 feet. He was outside circle two for it. Andy looks back at the camera after he makes it. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He said, this is going to be epic. And then as soon as he did it and he made it, he turned around, gave me that fist pump. I was like, told you. Oh, my God. All right. On to the next clip here. Okay. So you might notice that there's a, there's a name in the top left corner. I, these, uh, I was just having some fun. I think – in general, oh, I know what this one is. This yeah, is I think in general that's the person who might know the answer here to start us off. So, okay, so here we go. We have, uh, we clearly can see the player here. Looks like they're getting ready to throw. Who is this? Where are they at? What's going to happen? I think that's Lisa Fakus at the River City Shootout, and I'm pretty sure she's going to bang this huge pot right now. I think she's going to shank it to a tree because it's Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Reed, it seems like you don't love Michigan trees. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and play it. You are correct. This is Lisa Ficus. Uh, we were so excited to be able to, you know, record one of the top women in the world. And she was so close there. She had been on fire all weekend with her putter. Uh, she was trailing, I think, by two strokes or three strokes at the time to Liz Carsipian, who went on to win the event. And so she needed that putt to kind of keep the pressure on. And so uh, after that putt, she just kind of settled herself in second place. And the, it kind of ended there at that point. Um, this is the same hole where Marweed banged his big putt to take the lead back as well and the MPO coverage it was crazy hole that weekend but yeah that was her trusty Nova I think that she threw there she's been throwing that really well all weekend so but yeah you mm -hmm. got you got two of them and Reed <laughs> is going to continue to guess because it's Michigan it's they're going to hit a tree and maybe you'll be right I don't know <laughs> he has to be at some point, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> all right uh next clip here that's Andy Okay, so we already know this right off the get-go. That's good. I'm glad Vanessa was able to ID him <laughs> before the Touch brother, but that's okay. Pausing it here. Um, we already know who it is. I already give you the point. Where are we at, and what do you think is going to happen? I mean... Oh, there's a frog in there. Is there a frog in between his putters? I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, I don't know Oh my god. There was gosh. like some I remember vaguely at one tournament he like caught a frog in between his putters and showed me. Okay. But I don't think you were filming then, so Oh, okay. All right. 
Maybe That's that. got to be it. There's no, no other I took way. A video, I took a video of it. Do you have an idea of what park it is? Well, I mean, it's Smash Park, right? Okay, okay. I want to make sure that you're going to put, because you guys hadn't said anything yet, so I want to make sure you got that point if it was if Yeah, it was sorry. There's like a big logo there. I was yeah, like, there is. kind of. You know, a little okay. nudge in your direction. All right, so your, your guess is that he's going to open a frog. Oh, no, there's a. Are those Oreo? That? No, those are Chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. So this <laughs> We're a little sellout. He's a little <laughs> Debbie guy. Oh my God. Andy. This was this was recently after he was on coverage and they didn't recognize that he ate a cookie until much later and then made a comment about it. So when he was at our coverage, he had driven all the way back and then said, I'm going to put some cookies so that they can't mistake it this time. And so we made sure to put it in there. <laughs> we're going to get you guys all sorts of sponsors over here. We're, we're doing our best. All right, next clip here. <laughs> now, I want only Vanessa to guess this one. Reed, don't say anything. Yeah. So we're going to pause this. Vanessa, can you tell me who is this, where are we at, and what's going to happen? <laughs> That's Reed. And gosh, where is that? Um... <laughs> Reed is. I'm going to guess it's somewhere in Michigan, maybe. <laughs> I, will let, I will let Reed answer that part of it, where you're at, if he knows. If I know, if you what know. do you mean? <laughs> this is the most legendary course in Michigan. This is Bluegill. Okay. I'm offended. <laughs> and I'm going to guess he's going to hit the tree coming into the green. <laughs> <laughs> you started her on this tree hitting trend. All right, we're going to go ahead and play it, see what happens here. So like we mentioned earlier, Reed's pretty famous for doing some pretty, pretty funny stuff here. And he does his pretty classic water skip here. So it's not only just on one channel where it's happened. We've seen it now on multiple channels. And it actually ended pretty nice. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. All right. Now, Reed, this one is for you only. Because if you're so confident, I think you should be able to answer this one. So looks like pretty similar circumstances going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who is it? What is, what's going to happen? Well, Andrew Marweed, Bluegill, Skip Shot. Because okay. he just had to copy me. And try to one up me on his little freaking skip shot. Uh, I knew it. Now, do you yeah. remember uh, what round this was? And do you know if it was the same round of the shot we just saw of you doing it? Do you remember that? Uh, well, since you would ask, I would imagine they're, it's the same round. They're, it has to be. they're not the same round. What do you mean? So See, it, I in the round where you skip the water and you land safe, in the same round, Marweed throws a backhand Annie over the top that flexes out too early. He goes deep on the left side, has no look, has to chip up and take a par. So when you threw skip shot in the second time, I think this was the final day of round, so it was kind of drizzly this day. In fact, you had just literally changed your shoes and socks and everything. Like you had it in that little plastic <laughs> yeah. bag. I remember everything about you, man. But you had just changed your shoes and everything. And so you had thrown the skip shot and Marwee just like walked up. And I remember him making a comment. It's just like, it's so safe. And just <laughs> gripped it and threw it. And because when you threw yours, because you threw yours just before this, we thought you were safe. You had actually landed probably like an inch and a half into the water too far. And you were OB long. Yeah. All right. On to the next clip here. <clears throat> Only a few more left to go. All right. This one, someone in the distance looks like they're getting ready to do something. Pausing it. Who is it? Where are we at? You could be either of you can answer this. Oh, you gotta pause it. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh Sorry. my gosh. She's getting extra information. <laughs> she already knows what it is. She ruined it. We're disqualified. Oh, she ruined oh. it. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Reed. Oh, it's shocker. He's going to make a huge putt right now. <laughs> I'm giving you a half a point just because I, I was just like that is, Wait, can I tell you what I think it is? Yes. <laughs> I think it's me banging a big putt. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like Do so you remember cute. what event this it's is? Awesome. Yeah, that was that Meyer Broadway yep. shootout thing. Yep, it was yeah. indeed. Wow. I was, I was very sad because I knew that the top three finishers of the – MPO were going to qualify for the shootout. So when you were for third, I was like, me and Donut were like all hyped because we're like, we saw Marweed, we saw Nate, we're like getting stoked. And then we're like, where'd Reed go? And Reed had to leave early. And I was like, crying myself. To, I was so sad. Yeah. 
I just wanted you to take that championship belt, man. It was so cool. Uh, third place doesn't belong. It doesn't deserve a That's championship belt. That's not true. Belt. That's not it's true. true. It's true. Third you're, place is trash. You're number one in all of our hearts. What can you even what can you even do with a bronze medal? Nothing. You can make like a a sink faucet out of it or something. I don't know. Hey, in a tight pinch, you might need to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. we only got a couple more here. Um, make sure you pause it this time. I'm not in control of it. All right. You I think you will know this one. I know for a fact that you uh -huh. did not play with him. So who is it? Me. Let's see if she knows it. That's first, fair. That's fair. Actually. You can you can pass the buck. I think. Can I uh, play it past the pause? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't recognize this person from behind. I think he will be very upset to hear that. Uh, just that's just. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna say. Oh no! I know who it is. Oh. I know who it is. Oh, who is it? It's Bino. It is oh George Bino. Gosh. And he's going to make a huge putt because he just makes huge he just makes huge putts all the time. So I'm just going to guess that. Okay. He does make putts all the time. I have he the pleasure. a pretty shot routine, too. I think, he, <laughs> I think he shanks it to a tree. <laughs> there are a couple trees in his way. We'll have to see. Okay, playing it here. Of course, it is George Bino. We've seen this course uh, multiple times in this clip. We just had so many great highlights from it. It's from the first round of the Kalamazoo Open, our first pro event ever. He goes up and over the bush. Um, and I remember talking to him at the time. The, the basket was actually blind to him at the time. So he just had to look at that flag and just take a toss at it and hope it was written. And it was. Okay, that was we a got, good part. <laughs> we do. We got one last clip for you. I am 99.9% .9 certain you'll be able to get this one. This is probably our most famous clip. Oh, yeah. I, had to, I had to include it because it's Very just known. too good to know. Vanessa says she's got this. Go ahead, Vanessa. What is it? It's a uh, Wegrand shot I was talking about earlier. Uh, it was just like a big hyzer, and we're just, it was a big upshot, but it just went right in. I'm guessing that was for Eagle. It is for Eagle. Uh, it is by far probably the best shot we had on the channel that year. Um, I don't know how many people could ever claim that they've ever Eagled it. Um, most of it, you know, people probably say, oh, I've done it once because I yada, yada. yada. But uh, Wegger and I bet is probably the only person who ever actually has evidence of actually Eagling that hole. So it's just, <laughs> it's just it's like a sick a, shot. It's like a seal base. <laughs> and the best part about it too is like, uh, you know, he, you know, you guys mentioned it in your commentary for the shootout was just like all he said over and over again. Once he made it, I was just trying to get it close. I was just trying to get it close. <laughs> no, he's trying to take away all the, you know, credit, even though that was an amazing shot. So very well done. All right. Let me see where you're at here. I think it was eight out of eight. Nine out of eight, maybe. <laughs> Nine out of eight. Wow, Reed. You just, I think I got right. docked a couple points because I cheated on that one. She did. She did cheat on the one. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so trustworthy, Reed. <sighs> Got to change. <laughs> All right. I, you guys are close to Marweed, but he's currently in the lead by one point. Gosh. We'll have to think of some other way to get that point back for you guys. Yeah. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, coverage with you guys against Paul and Hannah will do just fine. That'll that give, right. I'll give you two points. <laughs> if we get some added cash, maybe. Who knows? Oh I got you. Okay. I'll get you. <laughs> One dollar. No, I'm just kidding. I got it. I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll get you. I for sure. Well, thanks guys for joining me tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure connecting with you guys and getting to, you know, back in touch with you guys. Is there anything you guys want to say? Any shout outs you want to give before we're done? Um, if my mom is watching, hi mom. And thank you for doing this interview. It was super fun. And I love your questions and we love all of your content. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank all the fans. I'd like to thank Crew42 for being such a standout video production disc golf company out of Michigan because <laughs> they just do a fantastic job with, you know, everything they put their hands on. So, yeah. Thank you. I didn't even have to pay you to do that. Say that, did I? Are you just, are you blurring out? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know it yet. <laughs> oh, I thought you were blurring. Oh, you blurring definitely out. blurred. I bet it's my internet. I'm not lying. Well, anyway, that'll wrap it up. No, that was you, man. <laughs> I'm that was gonna, you. I'm going to blame this. Me. That's fair. This, you can blame me. That's 100% my fault. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. Um, 
it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh my God, it's saying my internet Thank connection you. is yeah, unstable. Ha. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh,